and I now you can hear me. <laughs> that was a bit crazy. I should have checked my microphone before we began. Now you can hear me. Good to go. Thank you, Sabrina, for telling me that. Shall I start again? I'll tell you all that interesting information. No sound. You've got sound now. Just give me a for sound that you've got sound now. I have my microphone off. I don't know why that was. It just was set up with my microphone off. Let me know that you've got sound. No sound on YouTube. Hang on a second. Let me just see how we're going here. Um, you should have sound now. Lots of sound. Good to go. Tell me if you have. Yes, I can see thumbs up. Excellent. Chat box. It's okay now. Just missed out on everything from earlier. All right, I'll start again. It was probably a little bit silly, rushed anyway. What I said was, I'm Libby and I'm from Truly Myrtle and this is my weekly podcast and I come at you every week on Thursday morning, 10 o'clock New Zealand time, to just let, just to, just to say hi and to have a live chat with you. I love having a live chat with you. It is so nice to see your comments in the chat box and there's lots of you there now yeah you can hear me loud and clear so we talk all about all sorts of things here don't we we talk about knitting lots of knitting we talk about a lot of knitting but a lot of us also sew I sew not as much as I'd like actually at the moment uh, I spin I've been doing heaps more spinning um, I make things I have a rooster I have all sorts of things a big garden so I talk to you about all sorts of things things that are happening in my creative life and I love to hear what's happening in yours now I go live to YouTube and Facebook. YouTube people, I can see your names, good to go. Some of the Facebook people, I can see your name. If you haven't clicked the button to let me see your name, click that. And if you're not really sure what's going on and you just think, I have no idea if she can see my name or not, just pop your name at the end of the comment and then I know it's you. So people like Helen, I can see your name and I can see Muriel's uh, name and Claire, hi Claire. Uh, and then all the rest of you who are calling in from YouTube, which is quite a few of you, which is good. Uh, I can all see your names there. And yeah, you can hear me. The sun is shining. It is definitely warmer here, although we've had a few chilly days. It's been a bit crazy. So the, knit, the heavy jumpers are on the down out here. The heavy jumpers are on the down and out. And even when it's feeling chilly, I'm sort of reaching for lighter weight things. So I might have um, a cardi over the top, like a fingering cardi. Cardi, I might wear over the top to keep me a bit warm, but I'm even reaching for some sweatshirts. And I have got a couple of sweatshirt jumpers, and sometimes I wear those as well at this time of year. But I'm the, the migration into the summer knits is well and truly underway where I am. I'm wearing a little cotton top that I sewed a few years ago today, but I'm eyeing up my cotton tops over there and um, I'll be back into those. I've had to put my knitting down. I'm actually working on something in some nice, uh, more summery yarn at the moment. So some of you will see that soon. Uh, but I was thinking about um, new things. I was thinking, I was thinking, what should I talk to you about today? That's what I was thinking. Hi, Maureen. Nice to see you. Hi, Jean. Uh, I was thinking, what should I talk to them about today? Because I can't show you what's on my needles. And I was wondering uh, what's been happening in my life. And I was thinking about what's been happening in the last week since I chatted to you last and what you might want to hear about. Let me just see your comments quickly. It's freezing in Melbourne. Oh, brr. It's chilly in Sydney, says Beck. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you. And I'm not sure who that is, another person on Facebook. Um, just let me know your name maybe on Facebook because then I know who it is. If you want to, you don't have to. You can be anonymous if you want. Claire says, we've got a cold spell coming and it's currently windy and overcast. I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> I just know that right now it's kind of sunny and I'm thermally warm a lot of the time now. So I'm not noticing the coldness except when it gets quite cold and then I feel cold. But then sometimes I also feel hot even when it's cold. So I'm just sort of, I'm wearing a lot of those clothes that you can take on and off quite easily. I, I now understand why cardigans are so popular because you can take them on and you can take them off and you don't have to whip them over your head and work out where you're going to put them. You just slip them on and off. I love sleeves that I can yank up, things that I can wear open, that I can be aerated in. So that's what's happening in my life with, in terms of layers and clothes. Hi, Audrey from Emerald Oz. Nice to see you, Audrey. It's cold and raining in the UK. Joe. it probably is cold and raining in the UK because you're like, you're on, the, you're on the into the sweater side of the world. We're coming out of the sweater. Wondering if I can do the tubular bind off and watch and listen to you at the same time. Good luck, Kim. That will be interesting to see if you can. I'm not sure. Could be that could be a big ask. 
Anyway, I was thinking, hi, Bab. I was thinking, uh, what do you want to hear about? And I thought, what's been happening in my life the last week? Well, I'll tell you what's been happening. Every single one of my children is studying for exams. Every single child. I have four children. They're all studying for exams. And you know what happens? Those of you who have had children and have studied for exams, you know what happens when they're studying for exams. You're studying for the exams as well. It's not just them doing the exams. You're also doing the exams. It's just what it feels like. And so I have been, I have been talking about the Russian Revolution and the British uh, Industrial Revolution and what is a revolution even? I haven't really been talking too much about um, anything legal. My son is doing a law degree. It, I'm sure he would tell me more if he could. I just hear um, vague things. He, 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 when he gets a chance, he does unload on me, but he is less inclined to phone. Uh, the girls, I've what else been doing? I, I, I now have vague memories of how to turn decimals back into fractions, into percentages. That's what I've been doing. My week is full of new things, old things, reminding myself of old things and new things. I went on a walk this morning with one of my daughters who's doing a history exam and she wanted to talk about history and the thing that the thing that is confusing for her now because the timeline seems so random is the British Industrial Revolution and I find it completely fascinating because so much of what we love now, textiles and fabrics and yarn and spinning and knitting and weaving and all of these things you know there was a a real boon the, the industrial revolution that is how it started it started with the spinning jennies it started by taking you know moving cottage industries into factories factory work huge um a textile industry that grew in britain and you know and they had a lot of uh, fabric that had come in from india this i didn't realize there was a lot of cotton that had come in. And so the British industry started by printing all of this fabric. Uh, and actually, I think she said to me about 40, 45% of the exports um, going out of Britain were textiles, uh, a lot of them into France. And so it was a, it was a large part of their um, overall economy, money coming into the country from overseas. I think it was about 20% of the economy or something. Uh, but a huge proportion of that was the textiles. And so some of the questions she gets asked are things like, um, you know, uh, were factories the most important thing in the industrial, you know, this is kind of lots of slightly vague questions about whether factories were important in the Industrial Revolution. And so when you think about the factories, they started with the textiles. And then um, it was it's just so interesting. So she talked at me all morning and I asked questions. And um, I, I asked questions about things. Well, what happened? What happened with these health acts they were introducing because people were getting so sick in the factories? Why would that benefit the um, economy and why would things improve with the health act and so we talked about well if people are well then they'll work and they'll work harder and they can have more people and more factories and you sort of less time trying to you know um, meet meet the demands when you don't have enough people to to um, work apparently they people could <laughs> even back then people they had these houses you could go to so you sort of had the sick leave so you, that you could go to these little houses which ended up being poor houses which were terrible um but you would get paid if you were unwell so people would fake it and they would be uh, unwell so we talked all about that kind of stuff this morning and i was thinking i was just thinking how amazing it was all of the stuff that happened with the canals and the steam engines and the use of coal to drive the economy it was quite an incredible time it would have been amazing to live there although i may have been a bit of a luddite I may have been one of the people that said, oh, hang on a minute, I quite like spinning on my spinning wheel at home and I quite like producing it. And I've got quite a skill that is useful and I'm not sure that I want you to whip my work away from me and take it into the factories. You know, those Luddites, they, some of them, some of the protests were quite violent as they tried to move work out of cottage industries into the factories. I, I may have been unsure about that whole move. I may have also been quite up in arms about the the, the um, conditions of the factory workers. I'm pretty sure I would have been saying, "Oh, hang on a minute here. This is pretty ropey. What's going on? Can we not um, can we not sort this out?" So anyway, I found that really interesting. But I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about um, learning new things. 
And I was thinking about being reminded of things you know and how everything in your life, you know, starts coming together, doesn't it? The older you get, I could I could talk to this daughter about, you know, from from a bird's eye view of life about all of the things that I've experienced living in rurally we can look at a paddock and we can see it plowed and we can imagine the difference between trying to live if we were subsistence living on our farm the difference between that and if we actually had to earn money off our farm what would the machinery do for us a lot a lot the machinery would be incredibly helpful um and so we could look at the paddocks and do that but I was thinking about I'll get to the point I was thinking about things that you might want to reflect refresh on go back to and fill some gaps of as well so I thought I'd show you a few books all of that to tell you I thought I'd show you a few books now before I do that let me just see what you've been saying um it's really cold in Tassie again today. You're getting a really cold snap over there, you Aussies. Uh, morning, Libby. It's pretty windy down here in North Canterbury again. You're trying to decide if you actually go out this morning, Amanda. Amanda, get outside. I think you'll enjoy it once you're out there. You can always come back in. But yes, windy. I don't enjoy the wind that much. Hi, Catherine from Ontario, Canada. Um, Philippa says, I'm still knitting curry. That was our new pattern over in Wardrobe Toolbox. It is I actually, I love that shawl. It's a new shawl. She's got tartan. She's a tartan shawl. I use Southland yarn with my colors as well in it and a little bit of spin cycle. In my version, uh, people have been making their own tartans and that one will be out to everybody else next year. But it's one of those really fun, it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a DK shawl. So it's, for me, it takes the place of a sweater um, or you, or as well as but you can wear it as a very warm layer and it's got this lovely tartan that runs all the way through it and I put little buttons on it so I can secure it it's it's, it's about as poncho as I'm gonna go so that's um that's that one Curie her name is she's a cuddle she definitely is uh hi from Chile Montana USA we're going to be nine degrees Fahrenheit by tomorrow that sounds very cold Time to get the winter clothes out and the snow tires on. Oh, good luck in Montana. That does sound cold. All I can say, Libby, is it will pass. Is this the, uh, are the exams or feeling hot all the time? Both, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, eventually, both of those things will pass. Good morning, says Angela. Freezing in Canberra. You still managed to get to the gym. Good on you, Angela. Well done. It does feel good getting out in the morning. I've been enjoying it. My daughter's been uh, forcing me to go, which is actually really good to have someone to um, kick you up and out of bed, I find. I, I find it helpful. Mm. Always gets me set up for the day. Right, let me show you some of these books. Now, I've got th only three books to show you. I thought about it. I've got a lot. I have. A, I love books. I am. I love, 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 love books. I have a lot of books. Um, and I use my books a lot because I just find it quite... I just like it. You can get quite lost in the internet. I find books, I can remember where things are in books when I've read them. I can't remember where I saw them on the internet, though. If I've searched something out, I can find it. I, I, I may never find it again. I, I sometimes don't know where I found it. But with books, I can. I think. I guess I'm very visual. I can remember, oh, I saw that in a book. I saw that in that book. Or there's something interesting in that book. I can remember it. Or that one's always been quite useful. And so I go back to books a lot. So I picked out of all my books, I've got piles of books, I've got books on the floor, I've got books on my bookshelf. Of all the books, I picked out three that I think are quite helpful for someone who wants to have to hand books that do several things for them. One, which is the first one, which is an Elizabeth Zimmerman book. Now it doesn't actually matter whether it's this Elizabeth Zimmerman book. Any Elizabeth Zimmerman book will. It will help you fall in love with knitting. It will it will help you feel reinvigorated about knitting. Elizabeth Zimmerman will make you laugh. Uh, she will remind you that you're normal, and um, she will just pique your interest in all things knitting. I think she tells a wonderful story. Her books are written in a story fashion, so she'll tell you that you know she will talk you through a pattern and written um she says things like um so if anyone she said to me oh here we are i'm going to read you a little paragraph this is the kind of thing she says there is no right way to knit there is no wrong way to knit the way to knit is the way that suits you 
and the way that suits the wool and the pattern and the shape that you're currently working on. Show me any mistake and I will show you that it is only a misplaced pattern or an inappropriate technique. There are patterns that include drop stitches and twisted stitches. There are projects which should be as tight as you can possibly knit. There are others where you have to relax to the point of lethargy in order to make them loose enough. I've not yet found a pattern which includes a split stitch. This is the only real mistake I know. So if anyone, anybody kindly tells you that what you are doing is wrong, don't take unbridge. They mean well. Smile submissively, submissively and listen keeping your disagreement on an entirely mental level. They may be right in this particular case, and even if not, they may drop off pieces of information which will come in very handy if you file them away carefully in your brain for future reference. And then she goes on, this digression leaves me still working my way up my first ski sweater. And then she goes on to talk about the ski sweater. sweater. Um, she has all sorts of patterns. Elizabeth Zimmerman believed in knitting in the round wherever possible. Her patterns are knitted from the bottom up. Unlike Barbara Walker, I thought about showing you about bringing you Barbara Walker. Barbara Walker goes from the top down. She writes not quite. She writes in a similar way, but not 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 such a similar way. This one is called the Opinionated Knitter. This chapter. Um, she has some little diagrams in here to help you do things, and. If you are feeling, if you're feeling like you've lost your knitting mojo, Elizabeth Zimmerman might be quite a good one to read. She's got a bunch of different books. She's got Knitting Workshop, The Knitter's Almanac, Knitting Without Tears. I can't think what else. Um, but she's got a bunch of different books. She's died now. Uh, her daughter still carries on her business. And um, what's it, what's her business? What's her press called? It's called something press. Um, it's going to be on here. Well, this one's published by Simon and Schuster, Sh 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 whatever. Um, I want to say something press, and it's gone out of my head. You're probably telling me in the comments. Not yet. I can't remember, but her daughter carries on um, the business now, and yeah, it's a re she's just it's just really light um, and it, it delightful. It's absolutely delightful. So if you want to um, just feel good about knitting, I think this is a good one to start with. You will learn a lot. You will also learn a lot. You'll learn about how not to sweat the small stuff. Schoolhouse, thank you. Schoolhouse Press, yes. You'll learn how to not to sweat the small stuff. You'll learn that um, you're the boss of your knitting. That's something she says all the time. One of her quotes on the back here is, knit on with confidence and hope through all crises, which I think is very important right now. So Elizabeth Zimmerman is my first recommendation. She's the kind of person you'll keep next to the bed and you'll pick her up and you'll have a little read and you'll chuckle to yourself and you'll think, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only person who did that. I thought that was just me. No, it's not just you. You're very normal. So knitting without tears. That would be my first suggestion. suggestion. Part technique part inspiration and a lot of knitting lifestyle it's a really she's really good for that okay the next one I thought I'd show you is something if you're feeling courageous or bored one or the other courageous or bored if you feel like you need a little pep up in your life and um you want to do something different with your knitting you're feeling like you've accomplished something and now you need a little bit more of a challenge if you uh, have got a pattern, you've found a blueprint of a pattern that you um, love. I feel like my top's all gone crooked. Let me just straighten it up for you. Uh, if you have got a pattern and you've found a blueprint, you've got a cardigan, it, you love the shape of it, fits you really well, uh, and you want to make that cardigan again, and you think you want to make it differently, and you can use a different color, of course, that will do things differently. But if you want to throw in a different stitch and you want to play around with different stitches, grab yourself a stitch dictionary. Now I have many, many stitch dictionaries. But this one I bought in, oh, I don't know, recent years. The Knit Stitch Pattern Handbook. There's 300 designer stitches and techniques. Melissa Leapman. I quite like this book. And one of the reasons I like this book is because, well, it has a wide range of stitch patterns for a start. And it's all helpfully divided into sections, which are colored on the edges. So there's purple and there's green and there's pink and there's teal and there's all sorts of different um, types of um, 
stitches, novelty stitches to um, cables and lace and twisted stitches I imagine is one. Textured knit, that'll be have twisted stitches in it. Uh, I really like this one, Text yeah, well, textured stitches is another one. It's, it's really nice and clear to read, it's easy to find things, it has a bunch of stuff in it, 300 is quite a lot, and it doesn't just have the stitch pattern, it's got a picture of the right side and the wrong side, it has the written instructions and a chart. That is amazing. That is amazing. So you don't, if you love working with charts, she has charted it for you. If you like written, it's there, but you can also see, because sometimes you might think, oh, I quite like the wrong side of that one, actually. The wrong side of that one looks quite good. Now, she doesn't always do that, only where it's useful, because the wrong side of that isn't going to be much chops, and the wrong side of that probably isn't going to be that fascinating either. But where they look great on the wrong side, she includes that. But with every one, look, we've got written instructions and we've got charted instructions over here. So you can see, if you're working in the round, you just need to include the repeat that you're working on. You don't have to worry about balancing it if you're working in the round. Those stitches on either side are balancing stitches. So you'll just grab your repeat from the middle and you work that over and over. Like for a hat, for example. You could turn a hat into something different by just throwing a repeat in as long as your numbers worked. You could do that. That this stitch over here, this pattern over here, the whole thing is the repeat. So you just work that over and over and over. Um, the repeats are indicated by the dark lines out on the outside. Now they're all knitted as if you're going to knit them flat, but we know that if you want to knit them in the round, you just work up this side. Every row starts on this side. If you're going to knit them flat, you have to alternate and you follow the numbers. But if you want to knit them in the round, start with every every side start up there and you work the stitches as if they were right side rows so you don't work them for wrong side rows you work them for right side rows so this one is quite good I quite like it as I said there are many 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 stitch dictionaries out there but I, this one is clear it's clear and um, easy to follow and it has a bunch of stuff in it that you might find useful let me have a little look what you're saying Ah, uh, it's lovely rain today. It's drought in the Hunter Valley. Oh, it's 10 degrees and a jumper day again. Yay. Oh, good on you, Carol. That sounds good. Embrace the day. Uh, Tanya said it's good to hear about Book Hub here in New Zealand. Oh, I haven't heard about Book Hub, Tanya, because we lost the books depository and books have got so expensive, haven't they, lately? I'll go and have to go and have a look up the Book Hub and see. Elizabeth Zimmerman, I have her almanac one, I think it's called Beck. Yeah, her almanac one is nice because that is, you follow the year and there's something for every day of the year. Uh, and um, some of her taste can be a little old fashioned looking, but she's so clever. She's a really clever knitter. She always talked about how nothing was invented. It was un invented, like she rediscovered it. Uh, good morning from an extremely windy Canterbury. Oh, you've got a headache coming on. That's no good. I love Elizabeth's books. I don't know who that is, but that's. I'm sorry about your headache. Yes, Meg, Swans Meg Swanson from the Schoolhouse Press. That is Elizabeth Zimmerman's daughter. Thank you. I knew you guys would know that. Hi, Catherine. Calling in from Scotland. I bet you might be in a jumper. Uh, Yvonne, I do that with Georgie all the time. Uh, here we go, you see. Using a different stitch pattern. Yvonne has made Georgie sweater. That's a little drop shoulder sweater that I've got and a sport weight. Could, you could sub with fingering for that quite easily. She has got taken that sweater and she has made it five times. Five times. And none is the same. Her favourite pattern is the he. I'm not sure what that is. It must be a spelling mistake. I used the stitch pattern from like a cloud pattern. Oh, right. Brilliant. So you've taken a pattern out of another garment and you've put it onto that one and you've just fudged it and figured it out and worked out the numbers and made it work good on you that is absolutely brilliant so when you have a blueprint you can take a stitch dictionary and you can have a bash at doing it yourself you may not do the whole thing covered in a stitch you might just do a couple of cables up each side you might just do something down the middle you might do it on the front and the back you might just do something on the front and not the back at all you might not do the sleeves you might do um, a, a series of patterns in it to make it, a, a, you know, varied across the front and the back. You might just do it to here. You might just do it underneath the shoulder shaping. You might do it down. You might do it just on the shoulder. 
all sorts of ways that you can mix things up. You change out the cuffs, change out the ribbing around the neck. Uh, so I think a stitch dictionary is a nice thing to have in your knitting library if you are feeling bored or adventurous. That is a good thing to have in your library. Uh, here we go, what else is saying? I'm knitting Rebel Rebel and totally regret using the wrong yarn for the provisional cast on. Oh no, I wonder what yarn you use for the provisional cast on. I wonder if you can um, swap it, somehow chop it out. Is, is it visible or is it um, sticky? Might be sticky. Oh, they'll be on my Christmas list. Excellent. Oh, it's Tamsin. You're doing the Rebel Rebel in Windy Canterbury. Oh, Tamsin. I wonder what went wrong. Hi, Libby. I'm watching and spinning some fibre for socks. Oh, yay. That's I haven't got my sock fibre on my um, spinning wheel. My last spinning that came off my wheel, I think it put me off a bit doing the next bit because I have this beautiful fibre, uh, which was merino silk, and I think I've butchered it a bit actually I don't it's over it's just not great it's not great it's too twisty I've, I've it's all finished it's all plied um I talked to you about it before where I I tried to unwind it a little bit because some of it was too tight that was actually really successful because I I um, chain plied that part the other day where I've unwound some of the singles that were just too tight it's put me off a bit but I um anyway I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pick something from out of my pile over there and get on to the next one I might go back to a Corriedale just to um just to have something that I know that I could I was doing and, and enjoying um but then I also just found a little a bobbin with some beautiful white fiber on it incredibly soft uh next to my sp my spinning stuff and I've already started spinning some of it and I'm managing to get this beautifully fine even fiber and I don't know what it is I just remember I remember I don't know what it is I remember that it was special that's all I can remember and I don't know what what exactly what's in it it doesn't look like it's got silk in it um but it's got a, a label in it from um that Irish yarn company whose name escapes me right now with all the colorful yarn it's got their label in it oh you know who I mean um, the ones who have that like electrically bright colored yarn and they are based in Ireland uh, anyway someone will tell me I'm sure um, their label is in it in the bag and I'm thinking but this is white yarn this is white fiber it's um I'm not sure why they why I would have white fiber from a company that made um, this incredibly colorful yarn and fiber. So I don't know. That might be a, a miss. That I might have fallen in the bag. <laughs> anyway, I might finish it. I'll see. I might just hedgehog fibers. Thank you. I knew someone would remember. You're my brains at the moment. Um, I don't know why it was having hedgehog fiber labor in there because I wouldn't. I don't imagine I would have bought a blank skein from them. So I think it's something else. Um, oh, okay, this is your Rebel Rebel. It was the crochet cast on yarn. It's fluffy. So I'm cutting out each stitch. Oh, that's a real pain, isn't it? The crochet cast on. Have you tried the provisional cast on onto another needle with the same yarn? That is by far and away my favorite. I don't remember if I've actually showed, made a tutorial for it generally, but I'm pretty sure that we did a Mordrip toolbox. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I did have done one over there showing you how to do the cast on onto another needle I that is my go-to I love that one have you tried how Nui fiber it's so cloud like no I don't I don't think I have um, how Nui is that a particular breed or is it a someone who makes that I'm not sure look at you hedgehog 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 yes you're all right hedgehog fiber it won't be hedgehog fiber will it because it's so colorful uh, someone said a good tip for provisional cast on is to use a spare barber cord stitches to slide off the cord onto your needle when you're ready that sounds like a good plan as well that is yeah so you my one I provisionally cast onto another cable but you could equally do it onto a piece of yarn okay let me show you the last book the last book is a bit of a doozy it's not as doozy as they come they certainly come bigger but this one I think is actually an excellent excellent book I bought it quite a few years ago when it came out it is not cheap but actually if you only had one book if you just had one book in your library maybe make it this 
maybe. Uh, it's the Vogue Knitting Ultimate Knitting Book. This is the new one. They had an old one. This one is, as they say, completely revised and updated. It is absolutely amazing. It's got big pages. It's not. It's a big book, but it's not terribly fat. Uh, again, it's color coded, which I always like. But it has got. You want to know the answer? You will probably find it in here. I would think you're going to find a lot of answers in here. Just short answers to things. So, for example, um, what have I got here? Oh, we've go. We were talking about charts before. There's a whole section in here about how to read charts, reading lace charts, managing charts. Lots of stuff about that. Um, I'm pretty sure in the beginning they're going to tell you how to knit. They're going to tell you about yarn. They're telling you about needles, all different kinds of needles, um, needle sizes, and comparing them. It's got a bunch of different. Um, stitch tutorials on how to do particular things that one is knit one pearl one bind off a sewn bind off it's also got another kind of sewn bind off a pico bind off sloped bind off a um, whole lot of stuff about cables some basic cable stitches and cable patterns how to make them but it's got more than that it's got instasia it's got lots of different things about charts making stripes mosaic um, it's got a whole section on circular knitting and sticking and entrelac, joining mitres squares, doing double knitting. There's an interesting page to show you a whole lot of different stitches. It's got a whole section on understanding, just take the cover off, understanding instructions, schematics, gauge, counting rows, knitting abbreviations, crochet abbreviations, knitting terminology, unusual and alternative symbols. It is just jam packed with stuff so if the power goes out and we can't get online and you don't can't find a youtube video to show you how to do it or you can't get anything else that you're used to looking at this would be a fantastic book it's all about there's a whole lot of stuff about correcting errors darning a whole chapter on finishing blocking seaming i've got things like this if you are an aspiring designer you want to make something for yourself They've got a whole Vogue knitting design worksheet. They talk you through some measurements. They talk you through about making schematics, ideas, um, pattern notes. Um, here, look, they've even given you this page here, which has got our charted um, paper. It's got Vogue knitting design worksheet blank. All of the stuff. You can have a go. If you want to set it out and make it, make even just something for you, make something for you, um, would be fantastic Rib ribbing differences in ribbing um, how to do a look at this sort of stuff if you want to know it raglan cap shaping set and sleeve cap shaping it goes on and on and on so they have really covered the ambit of things salvage edges neck bands loops patch pocket shoulder pads then they tell you all this this might be a nice place for some of you to, if you're thinking about starting designing some of these how to do different shawls. I bet there's some real goodies in there. I haven't actually looked at that for that, but I bet there's some really good things in there. Um, and then accessories and hats. Oh, it just goes on and on and on. Gloves, socks, look, over the knee socks, all that kind of stuff. It is absolutely the most fantastic book. It's got a great index in the back. It is simple language. It's not complicated. Simple language, lots of pictures, lots of great um, instructions. I think it's one that's worth having on your shelf if you uh, want an all-encompassing an all uh, knitting friend in your living room. Maybe this one is the one to do. It's it's not cheap. I'm not sure what the price is now. It is definitely a really weighty, big, comprehensive book. So, yeah, it's a, it's an investment. This one. Let's have a look. Um, oh, you're rusting to casting on. It's all sorted now. Oh, good. Yeah, you can. Um, you just have to unpick them one at a time on your rebel. Mm. There are other huge comprehensive book. I've got one down there. June. It's called The Principles of Knitting. It's by June. Huh, something starting with huh, Hyatt. 
Herman, something like that. Um, that book is enormous, but it's not as accessible as this one. This one is, I think, is more accessible. I think you can just open it and find your answer really clearly. The other one is that fat. It's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a dictionary, but big. It's a massive, massive book. It'd be amazing if you really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of knitting. You really wanted to understand why, how the minutiae my new shy of knitting that would be really good but this one i think it just is a really helpful one for just people who are uh, wanting to improve their knitting find out the answers to their questions and um just want to try things a little different way maybe you want to put a different neck in something or you want to just a refresher about um just some of the things that you might have taught yourself that you have you think oh I pretty much taught myself everything I know. Maybe I should go back and have a little look and see about some of the basics. This would be a good one for that too. So those are the three that I've got for you. Elizabeth Zimmerman for a bit of a pet me up, a bit of a knitting love fest. The knit stitch to really stretch you out and to um, expand your knitting repertoire. Turn that blueprint pattern into something else. And then this one, which is really heavy. It's a really heavy book at the hardback. Uh, I've got a hardback anyway. Um, this one for your all-in-one um, knitting encyclopedia. Like one of those sort of, you know, you used to get those in, in old-fashioned books where you had answers to everything. The the handbook for girls. Uh, we've got a few of those really, really old ones. It's a bit like that, but it's all about knitting. Alrighty, everybody. That's what I wanted to tell you. I found the New Zealand dollar 100 mark for the Vogue Oh yeah, round, it's around $100. Yeah, that'll be about right. It's around $100 for this um, big one. That's probably right. And in fact, that might actually be on the, is it is still that or is it even a little bit more than that? It was definitely investment. This is Christmas present from somebody. This is a whole family gets you this for Christmas, that kind of present. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely an investment. But it's a good investment, I think. If you use it, it's a good investment. Um, but I think it's fantastic. They're very, very good. Alrighty, everybody, I will see you next week, uh, next Thursday. Come and join me for another chat. It's always nice seeing you. And um, do heaps of knitting. And I hope the weather with you is, I hope the weather with you is, facilitates knitting and the wearing of knitting. So enjoy, enjoy life where you are. And uh, I will see you next week for more knitting chatter. Until then, goodbye. See you later, everybody. Bye.